Cotton Bowl versus Ohio State. Ohio State obviously was affected by players opting out and guys deciding not to play in that bowl game, players hitting the portal. Missouri, they didn't have all that. And that's that's fine. Like still play the game and they won the game and they deserve to celebrate and that's good. Uh Drinkwitz has built Missouri to this point. He's a guy like I wonder if, if Drinkwitz was the head coach at Tennessee, how would Tennessee fans take him? Like would they would they back him? Because like there's a lot of other fans that don't like Tony Vitello because he is he's a talker. He is in your face. But he's not annoying, I don't think, like Drinkwitz. I think Drinkwitz is annoying. Uh, I think I do think he's good for college football. I do think he's good for SEC football because him and Lane Kiffin, like they mix it up, they troll, and it's entertaining. But I don't understand why Drinkwitz thought it was a good idea to talk to our players during the game and basically give our players motivation to come out in the second half and, and win that game. And listen, it's hard to win in the SEC. It, it, it's being said every single day. Every single game, it's being said. And some folks want to listen to it and take it seriously, and some people don't. Well, there's constant examples. Like Kentucky just lost on the road last night to LSU. Now, and that's not a good LSU team. No, but one thing we will say about the LSU team, we saw that couple weeks ago here, LSU plays hard. They like, do. They, Missouri does as well. Missouri played really, really yeah, they play hard. hard. And LSU's not a good team, but it's not a bad team. That Missouri team is 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 bad. Just ask Dennis Gates. He said as much, particularly about the rebounding. Dropped an expletive saying that it was the F word bad, I believe that he was. His team was effing bad at, at rebounding the basketball. Yeah, <laughs> Man, I, t- I, I tell you what. Coaches are on a heater in their in their posting comments of of late, but it it is hard. I although I was disappointed in the effort and the energy, and, and you know that I'm a person that I, I'm hesitant to call out the effort and energy. One of my pet peeves as as sports fans are I think too many see poor results on the field, on the court, on on the diamond. Oh, the, the team losing, they're not playing well on on this night, on this day, and the automatic um, line or, or go-to thought is they're not playing hard. They're not playing with effort. Yeah. They're, they're not playing with energy. That, that's such an easy excuse and, and the low-hanging fruit, okay. and, and I, I've, I've spoke about this before, but it that – on Tuesday night, I, I do think that they were not playing with the requisite amount of effort and energy to win on the road in conference play, even against a, a bad Missouri team who hasn't gotten blown out a ton. And you, you've heard a lot of people, both coaches that play Missouri and analysts like Ron Slay, they, they play really, really hard every single night. And, and if if I don't care what the record is or how bad you are, if you don't show up ready to play at the collegiate level, this isn't high school. Yeah. At the collegiate level in the SEC, arguably the best conference in America, yeah. you're, the game's going to be closer than than it should be and, and what is expected. And, I mean, Rick Barnes didn't say that they weren't playing without effort directly, but when he says that Missouri was winning the 50-50 balls in the first half, that's him saying that his team wasn't playing with the requisite amount of effort and energy. And, again, I thought even though the score – didn't reflect it early in the second half. I thought you could tell right away that the effort and the energy was different coming out of the locker room. Dalton got hot. Tobey was tremendous throughout the game in both halves. He was the only one that showed up from start to finish. And you got Jonas Adu going as well there in the second half to to help Tobey uh, when Tennessee went to that two big lineup. Hmm. I had Tobey and another player I thought was 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 showing up a little bit more. Uh, oh, I said to someone, Tobey and Santi are not shell shocked because it seemed like everybody else was shell shocked. Um, Santi, I didn't feel like was. I do feel like we did a really poor job of taking care of the basketball. Um, just silly turnovers. Both teams had it, but. You know, if you're Tennessee, you're the fifth-rated team in the country. There's not really no excuse for you. 
it's no, no excuse um, for you to be turning the ball over the way that that we were. Um, the matchup that favored Tennessee was us in the post, us rebounding. And so Rick Barnes going to the Adu awaka uh, combo proved to be very beneficial for Tennessee, controlling the boards. Uh, Adu took over. Awaka took over. I did not have Awaka leading Tennessee in scoring. Did not have that. Did not have him and Don Connect being the only two with a double double. I didn't have that either. Uh, I thought that would be you know Jonas Adu, uh, but Adu was was awesome. And it's funny because like the commentators, it's every game they talk about how great Adu is with his left hand. Well. Adu is left-handed. <laughs> like he, growing up, he did everything with his left hand. Like he, he was left-handed growing up, and so that's why he's so efficient with his left hand. He plays basketball with his right hand, but he's he's left-handed. And um, a couple weeks ago on the locker room, I, I I asked him about his offhand, and he shared that with me. He's like, "Yo, I grew up. I thought I thought I was left-handed. I was doing everything with my left hand. Like I'm." That that's why it's so easy for me. And you saw that if 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 you didn't know at any point of the season, the Missouri game should have proved that when he had to tip back layup with his left hand. He caught it and threw it back up with his left hand off balance. That was telltale sign that dude left handed. He just shoots right handed. It's kinda like LeBron, man. LeBron's left handed, but he plays basketball right handed. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, LeBron. That's uh, but you, you know, pretty in, intriguing. You know, LeBron. LeBron said it. So you, you, mean, you got. You never know. No, no, you got to take it. I love, I love LeBron, but you got to take that. Dude, I love with LeBron. A grain salt. But sometimes LeBron be capping. Ain't that what they say? Yeah, you, you got to take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> Man, sometimes, dude, um, that that pass that that uh, went through LeBron's hands, that by his reaction was clearly an accident that went to AD, and. Everyone's like, man, that pass was so great. I thought it was an awesome touch pass, no look touch pass in real time. But that, like, you go look at the replay, you look at his reaction. It looked like he kind of grimaced a little bit because he missed the pass. It so happened with the AD. But then he was like, you know how we do it. He's trying to pretend like that was on purpose. And I was like, come on, bro, man, just bro, you great. You don't have to, you don't have to pretend like you meant to do that. It's okay to have. A play that that was an accident. That's good, man. You greatest score of all time, man. You don't have to lie about that. But I'm with you. Um, QC Rodney says, "What other coach in the SEC would have pulled that clownish ish?" Somebody, Eli Drinkwitz. Nobody. Lane is the only one. I don't think Lane would have done that. Mm-mm. Lane wouldn't have done that. What Eli did? I don't think Lane. You know, I don't think Lane does. Standing that. on business comment. No, I mean, all active on the sideline at court side, oh, no, 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 no. talking to oh, our no, players. I, no, he wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought we were still, still talking about the in season actions of, of Eli Drinkwitz after Missouri beat Tennessee. I don't even think uh, Lane would do the whole standing on business and and run away. I don't think he would do that. I I, I don't think that he would, but I wouldn't be. I he would be the only one that. The only other one that would do it. He would troll you on Twitter, but he wouldn't He wouldn't do what Eli did. Uh, Ron Hunsucker what? says, I don't think Ben is a real Grizz fan. Every real fan knows Memphis needs a pig. May not get one depending on where they're drafted, but that's what they need the most by far. Hunsucker trolling you, boy. No, uh, he's, he's, he's correct. I, I, I let my ambitions get in the way of my – Logical thinking. Memphis does need a big man more than it needs a wing. But Brian Hunsucker should also recognize the fact that the importance of adding a wing scorer who can shoot isn't too far behind needing a big man. They're 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 almost it's very close to being like one A one B. Like you, you got to address that this off season. Dalton Dalton would be perfect. But I I would agree if if you. If, if you like a big man there better than you like Dalton, go with the big man because, frankly, you don't one. have any big man. I thought you got, got a defense player of the year. 
Uh, we yeah, it's Jared Jackson Jr. But I'm more like when we say big man, we're talking about bona fide center. Uh, Jared Jared's more of a four. He he can play the five, but he's better off playing the four. Okay, okay. And, and and his game is a little more finesse than a bruiser like Stephen Adams. Like the Grizzlies were at their peak the last two years or so when Stephen Adams was in there rebounding the basketball. That that's Jared, Jared is very Jonas ish in, in terms of like having to stay on him about going and rebounding the basketball. Yeah, I feel you. Vol fan says every basketball team has issues. Every yep. team could get bounced early. So many Tennessee fans only watch Tennessee basketball, and they don't watch enough of other teams to understand that Tennessee isn't any more inconsistent than any other team. I would edit that and say any other really good team. Because there's only a few teams that are better than Tennessee. Tennessee is fifth in the country. I think Tennessee is properly rated. But you go look at UConn that, you know, a couple days ago, we thought, or basketball community thought they were just on their way for, to a, uh, a repeat. Well, they get smashed by, by Creighton on the road. You look at what UConn did to Marquette, couple days before that Marquette's a top 10 team they beat Marquette by 30 points crushed them um but that's that's basketball man that, well it's, it's also college athletics it's, it's college athletics it's hard we, we talked about it several times before it, it's hard for 18 year olds to 22 year olds to be consistent in life in anything I was not consistent at that age Jason Swain surely was not consistent at that age C Mac didn't know what consistency was. Ballstorm had no idea what consistency was at that point in his life. I don't like the point you're trying to make. I don't like it's, it. It, it's rare for young people to be consistent at that age, which I, I think bleeds over to on the football field, on the basketball court, baseball diamond, uh, and, and why you see so much more inconsistency in college than you do at the pro level. They're professionals for a reason. These young men and women are amateurs for a reason for the most part even though now some are not being compensated like they're an amateur but just in terms of the, the level of sport that they're playing they're, they're still an amateur uh, so I, I think that contributes to to the inconsistency that you see uh, especially during college basketball and college baseball season but even college football season most every team has at least one slip up a season and I think that's because of, of just that age group. And uh, my, my last thought is something that we've reiterated a thousand times, Wayne. It's hard to win on the road in college basketball. It's really hard. How many, how many, how many times have folks have said that? How many times have we said that? Or not we, Ben and Jason, but like every everyone has said that. Because, because that's not is. an excuse. But it's a fact. Yeah, because because it is. It's not anything but the truth. It is a known fact. It is hard to win uh, on the road. It's hard to be consistent in college basketball. That's why you just got to get really, really good. Got to have a some, little bit of luck on your side at the right time. That's what it's about. 865-255-03. We'll take our First break of the morning. Ben McKee, Go Hawks 247. I'm Jason Swain. Be right back. You're listening to the Swain event. You don't say. Fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Yeah. When you are craving some quality barbecue, there's only one place to go. Dead End Barbecue. Dead End Barbecue has been featured on ESPN's Taste of the Town, the first barbecue restaurant on the SEC Network, CBS Sports, Headline News Tailgate Show, Amazon Prime's The Restaurant Comeback, Food Paradise, and named one of the top 100 barbecue restaurants in America. The search is over. Dead End Barbecue is located on 3621 Sutherland Avenue right here in Knoxville. You can even have it delivered right to your door through Chow Now. Visit their website at deadendbbq.com. Dead End Barbecue. The search is over. 
Hey, Val Nation. This is Charlie Pratt, financial representative with Modern Woodman and MWA Financial Services. Modern Woodman has been touching lives and securing futures for 140 years. Being born and raised here in East Tennessee, I'm honored to help East Tennesseans in all phases of life with retirement planning, investments, and life insurance. A big win on Saturday starts with preparation early in the week. A secure financial future starts with planning today. Contact my office today at 865-919-6468 to review your financial plan and make sure you are on track for success. As always, go Vols. Registered representative and investment advisor, representative offering securities and advisory services through NWA Financial Services, Inc., a wholly owned subsidiary of Modern Woodman of America, member of INCRA, SIPC. Good morning, Swain Event family. Take a deep breath in and release. We're all back together in the AM and life is good. If you have real estate needs, just give me a call, Jennifer Morris at 865-257-7897 or email me at jennifermorris865 at gmail.com and go Vols. Just because you can't call in doesn't mean that you have to sit on the sideline. Impact the show with a text box. It's part of the free Swain Event app. Baby Chevrolet saves you money. 2.9% APR or $5,000 total value on new Silverado 1500s. New Equinox with 1.9% APR plus no payments for 90 days or 2,500 total cash allowance at Baby Chevrolet. All right, let's go to the phones. Swain Event Fuel by Dad and Barbecue, 865-255-03 is our number. Go to the phones. Good morning. Who do we have with us? Good morning. You already know who this is. Ben McKee. First and foremost, C-Mac was consistent. And at that age, you probably couldn't even spell consistency. But how are you doing? I'm well. How are you doing, my friend? I'm just, I'm just glad, glad to hear you. <laughs> awake this morning good to hear your voice my friend she may heard his name but uh, uh, i'm calling in today <laughs> well, he, he, got, he got mad at me last week when i left his name off him and big R Mac got mad at me last week when i i didn't wish them a happy black history month so c-mac happy black history month my friend i'm glad you got it in you know on this year's edition of black history month because we do get an extra day but you know me and swain ain't gonna talk about black history month are we swain I mean, I talk about it all the time, but we we don't have we don't have to discuss it right now if you don't want to. It don't matter to me. That's that, that's perfectly fine. Um, something else, and you missed what I was trying to put down. I got you. My bad. I'm no, you good. No, you fine. You fine. Uh, McKee, uh, it's very great to hear hear from you as well. It was great to hear the big orange Mac after you called us both out. You know, earlier in the week last week so uh i hope everything in y'all's world is going well aside from you know nitpicking i guess i should ask some relevant questions or question that'd be great <laughs> as we approach march this consistency thing you know uh has to pick up steam all right we're not going to have that luxury of playing many home games i'm not sure what the latest uh guess for where uh, Tennessee will be in, when, when it comes to that bracket breakdown. Uh, ben, I know over the past couple of weeks you, you've been alluding to like this five game stretch. You know, do you guys see a window of an opportunity for us to kind of pick up that consistency as we head into these postseason tournaments? Uh, so, so we won't, you know, be honestly a one and done in the tournament or make it a little bit further than we have in years past. So I asked, I asked Ron Slay uh, about what does it take for this team to take the next step? Like, what does it take for this team to be to, to peak? Because you want to peak at the right time, right? And mm -hmm. Tennessee has, you know, beaten Alabama at home. You've had some good wins. you played a tough schedule. Uh, we hear all the analysts and experts talk about Tennessee being a Final Four quality team. Uh, Jay Williams yesterday on the Kentucky LSU broadcast talked about, you know, Tennessee still being the, the best team in the league. For some reason, he felt like Kentucky was still right there, um, you know, along with Alabama. But hey, uh, his 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 takes have been a little off lately. It's okay. I'm still a big J. Will fan, uh, but he had a lot of love, a lot of love, a lot of love, uh -huh. for, lot of love for, for Tennessee and a lot of love for for Dalton Connect. Um, but asking Ron Slay about what Tennessee needs to do, 
we gotta be better at the free throw line, man, consistently. Like you, you can't just go seventy percent from the free throw line. Like y- your best shooters have to nail free throws. Period. Right. Point blank. Um, free throws was an issue in 2018-19 with Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams team. Purdue and Tennessee shot like 50% from the free throw line. If you shoot 70% from the free throw line in that game, you're winning. You're winning that game. So free throws um, have to be better, have to be more consistent, um, taking care of the basketball, rebounding. That's kind of the next step, I think, f- for this team. Is, is it too late? Is it too late in the season to try to veer away from, um, please, I know this is going to get a lot of backlash, but just stay with me. If we only look to DK and we look to DK to bail us out of situations or always giving us 20, 25, 30, is it too late to, to find that B option that can give us consistent 15, 18, 22? You know, during this aspect of the season, no nah, man, it's not. It's not. It's not too late for anybody to step up um, in in crunch time moments. Man, we've seen like we've seen Josh Richardson take over late in the season and, and be mm-hmm. kind of the catalyst uh, in the postseason. It was Conzo's last year, and Tennessee lost by a charging call against Michigan. Like Josh Richardson wasn't the guy all season long, uh, but he, he his game took another another step that year. And then the whole year, the next year, Don Tindall's uh, first year, Josh Richardson was the guy. But we saw Josh Richardson take over late the previous year. So it's it's to me, it's not too too late. And I don't think Tennessee is throwing the ball to Dalton and saying, go save us right now. Like, Dalton was hot. You feed the guy who was hot. It don't matter if it's Josiah Jordan James or if it's uh, Zakai Ziegler or it's Jordan Ganey. Like, if a guy's hit two in a row, all right, heat check time. Let's go give him the ball and see if he can make the third one. But Don Connect was on fire in the second half of that game. It so happened that he's also the same guy who we have in the past kind of thrown the ball to and said, go save us. But I don't think that was a go save us uh, moment uh, against Missouri, C-Mac. That's fair. Out the door. Um <clears throat> The, the 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 staff that that Tennessee has in place is, is, is pretty impeccable. I do want to just prepare you guys for worst case scenario. Okay. Okay. You want football staff? No basketball. Okay. Basketball <coughs> staff. Okay. Clear your throat. Um. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um. Justin Gaines is gonna come to NC State. Just calling that out right now. Calling that shot right now. Okay. Point blank. Period. Is that going to be the there head coach? No Is that going to be the head coach? Yes. Huh? Yes. Are, are these according to your sources, C Mac? I'm just saying, Keith is not. He's not going to be back next year. NC State needs a real basketball coach for the first time since Herb Sendek, and that is a shot at Sidney Lowe. All these other horses asses who, who come through and I think it's time I think it's beyond time for 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 state to make a real evaluation and say hey we need to call a game this this is what you're doing see back this is what you're gonna do with yes, your precious time on the program you go, you're it gonna, is you, you're gonna stump for two teams right now whoa hold on now y'all y'all know the deal y'all, y'all know the well, deal see back I'm very disappointed in you why you've, you've been, been on the phone, phone what five six minutes seven minutes if not longer you've, you've been, been as long as long winded as I am and Black. you have not right. at, Black, at least you yeah. have not at least once mentioned the teaser that J. Cole dropped last night that was a banger. I mean the, the disappointment in you this morning is real. We money motivated over here. I'm not ready for the fall off, that's why. If you want the full if you want the full like real deal, I'm not ready for it. because uh, that's gonna end the the the, the end of uh, an incredible era in, in music and what is what is rap after cold. Trash, right? Exactly. So y'all, y'all keep loving those mumble rappers, and y'all keep doing what y'all do very well. I, I, I appreciate and love both of you guys. Uh, keep up the incredible work, uh, and I'll see y'all uh, again before the next full moon. Okay. 
Alrighty. Alrighty. Alrighty, C Mac. And we hope you have a great day, C Mac. We got much love for you, C Mac. Love much love. Appreciate you, Appreciate you calling in. Much love for you, C Mac. Much love. I, mean, I, I think, think uh, waiting on somebody to land the plane. Waiting on land. I mean, I, I think the NC State thing is interesting. I don't think you're giving him enough credit for the thought. I, I, I think that would be an interesting. Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't have much credit to give, folks. Oh, who, I know who call in and are showing their fandom to two teams at the same time. Ben, I, I'm sorry, man. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got a lot of. What you, what you shrugging about? I mean, he's from. I don't care where he's from. You a Tennessee basketball it, fan and an NC, NC State, State basketball State. fan? It's NC State. It NC don't matter. State they play is irrelevant. Sorry, Raleigh okay. Ball and, and C Mac, but okay. in, NC State does not move the needle for me. It's so no, I don't care. Thank, thank you for Cannon Peebles. Cannon, Cannon, Cannon. Oh, I put it in my request. Do we have it to know? I put it in my request last night. I asked the Lindsey Nelson Stadium press box. I said, hey, when when Cannon Peebles' walk-up song is playing and he's walking to the plate, can we get the the underlying voice of Cannon, Cannon, Cannon? They said they would think about it. Think about it? Who does that think about? I will, well, the, the, these are young Caucasians, so I, I don't know that they understand how great of dude, young Caucasians understand hip hop more now than ever before. So what, well, what, the current age of hip, I had to explain the whole Cannon, Cannon, Cannon thing. Yeah, I mean it's it's it's, it's a little dated. It's, it's a little, little old now. His name is Cannon. Yes, but nobody understands the Cannon, Cannon, Cannon reference. reference. At, At least young, young people do not. Well, so I had to explain it. That, that's well, what I meant. By that, it's, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's Caucasian it's, before anybody gets upset. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer was, for Cannon Peebles. I was being sarcastic. It's a no-brainer. He has to do that. What is what is Billy Amick's walk-up song? Because I need to listen to that today. Oh, uh, I'm. What whatever his walk-up song is, I need to listen to today so I can have a good day. Because um, he he is starting his Tennessee career on one. I'm not good with song names. I forget off the top of my head. It's what a good are, one, what are you good at? Not a lot. But what but what does that say about you that you allow me to come on your show and talk for an hour and a half? I must be I must be really desperate. Um you must be. Vol fan says inconsistency isn't limited to co- uh, to college athletics. NBA teams are very inconsistent. Every team usually gets blown out by lesser teams multiple times a year. They just play so many games that no one cares and their playoffs are multi game series, so those one game stinkers are quickly forgotten if they win the series. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, have either one of you gentlemen visited any Kentucky message boards? If you need laughs or want entertainment, entertainment, I suggest visiting them. Love to see UK fans crying and losing their minds after a loss to LSU. Yeah, that was that was not a good loss at all by Kentucky. They're young, Swain. They're, they're young. They always teams can. Teams continue to play really well against Kentucky. See, Cal got it made, man. He has a built-in excuse that he can use every single year with a new team. Hey, these are young kids. They're they're young. They're immature. Don't take shots at them. Take them at me. Cal, they've been taking them at you. Yeah, everything I, I think he is, to, is is about you. They don't, he thinks that he has it made. He doesn't have it made anymore. People cannot stand the comments that he says post game. Kentucky fans are ready for something new, and I don't blame them they gonna do? at all. What are they going to do? They can go hire somebody that won't waste talent year in and year out, like he has the last several years. They're not going to fire Coach Cal. Uh, no. Uh, but I, I, I wonder if we'll get a mutual parting of ways at some point. Although Cal may just be like, no, you know, pay me my money. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a coach that um, if I'm Kentucky, I'm targeting. But I don't think anybody else will want to see that, happening because, see that happen because he will be a problem. But if Nate Oates was at Kentucky, there'll be some problems. 
What's, what's wrong with your face, Lee? What's wrong with your face? I really like Nate Oates, but trouble just seems to follow him. Issues, incidents just seem to constantly follow him and his program. And I'm I'm not even talking about the whole Brandon Miller thing. It's just like one one thing after the next. It, it's the the shoving a, an opposing player earlier this season. It's his player dropping the people's elbow on the Florida player last night. It's just little things like that always happening with his basketball team. Okay. And look, people want to get on Rick Barnes about not making an NCAA tournament. When y'all gonna get on Nate Oates too? He's had, he's he's had some daggum good. He's at he's at Alabama though. The, the expectations are not the same as Kentucky. Well, and I, he doesn't I recruit like have... like Calipar. He doesn't recruit NBA superstars like like Calipar. He has done a good job of bringing in Brandon Miller, who grew up as a Bama fan. Uh, that was a layup, but like he signed, he signed multiple five stars: stars. Jaden Bradley, Charles Bediaco. Okay. okay, I'm telling you the difference between Kentucky and Alabama. I'm not saying he didn't oh. sign any, but I'm telling you that Calipari on a year in year out basis signs one and dones, like a whole team of them. No one's doing that. Like Coach K was the only one that came close to doing that when he was still coaching, but no one was was was, was bringing in one and dones like Coach Kyle. No, I, I, I am aware. Yeah. I'm aware of that. I do. I do know that the like Tennessee fans love the joke. Oh, Tennessee won't make it past the sweet 16 on Rick Barnes. They'll get bounced before the sweet 16. Alabama fans joke amongst themselves is you can't get bounced in the sweet 16. If you don't make it to the sweet 16, it, it, who cares what we do in the regular season? We're just going to get bounced in the opening weekend. Anyways, the thing is, I, my, Nate I Oates think hasn't Nate been there long coach. enough. He hasn't, he hasn't been there long enough for for that narrative to start. I, I mean, not, this, not at the level Rick Barnes has, but yeah. most Alabama fans it has. This is well, that's stupid. This is Nick. This is uh, Nate Oates' fifth season. Fifth season. Last year was like his his big year. Now in twenty twenty one, they were twenty six and seven. Went to the Sweet Sixteen. Last year, Sweet 16. And so, like, he's only been to two Sweet 16s, uh, round of 64. His first year, they didn't go to the tournament. So, like, he hasn't he hasn't been there long enough and lost early in the tournament enough times for that narrative to, to get going. But if he keeps losing in the round of 64, not making it to the second weekend, then, yeah, it, it'll start. But Rick has been coaching 52 years. That's the difference. Uh-huh. I, I was not trying to imply that the narrative is the same. I was just saying that Alabama fans are becoming a little bit frustrated with that. And for me, I think Nate Oates is a great basketball coach, but all the other stuff that has come with him of late has worn off the lust a little bit for me. I, I don't. If you remember when when Roy Williams decided to retire, I was I was all for man. North Carolina should really go get Nate Oates. I think that'd be a great hire for them. I don't. I don't feel that way for a blue blood anymore. I don't think it's a home run hire. Yeah, I just think style of play, prestige. I think that would be a a, me, a mesh that would create issues for the opponents. I love Nate Oates' style of play. All the other stuff, I get you. I agree with you. But the style of play mixed in with the He's talent that you, can, that you can attract. Boy, that 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 could be a recipe for disaster for the opponents. That's all. Um, Ball fan says there is a thread on Kentucky board about Oates. They really don't want him, but they don't know what the hell they want. If you don't you don't want Coach Cal, you don't want one of the up and coming coaches in college basketball that's taking a football school to new heights. Um, who you want, then, Kentucky fans, that you can actually get? Who you want? Who? Well, what is a realistic replacement for Coach Cal? I don't think that – I mean, I I think Nados is going to be the Louisville coach. I mean, that's, that's, that, that would be a great move for Louisville. Yes. I, again, I think Nados is a, 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 a great coach. I'm not saying that he's not. I don't think Louisville got enough money. They, they, they have a lot. They have a lot of – their athletic department is an absolute – 
disaster at the moment. I wouldn't do that if I'm Nate Oates. They, 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 they too broke for me. You, you would be rolling into them at, at a horrible time. Yeah, that, that is for sure. No, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, Clint says, seen the new EA deal for the football game. Well, he's asking us if we did. $600 per player that opts in and a free copy. Oh. Um, I, I'll take my $600. My free copy. And, and a free copy? copy? Shoot, just, just give, give me the free, free copy. copy. I'm, I'm good. good. No, I'm gonna play. I need. I need my money. You're, you're already getting other money. money. You, I, you're I, a top 100. That's why I'm okay. With top 100, 100 player? player. That's why I'm okay with 600 instead of more because I'm getting other money. But I still need to be paid. Like I'm. I'm not free. You need to pay me something. 600 is good. I love the game enough to where just give me a copy and I'll be good. Oh boy, I'm going to the phones. Ben McKee. Life isn't, isn't all about, about money swing. swing. Okay. Says the guy can't take all, all this money out. that if you die tomorrow, all that money means nothing. Says this guy is selling the house and moving to a new house. Why you can't take that low offer then? But anyways, I good, good morning. Offer. Good morning. Who do we have with us? <laughs> Turkey man. Hey buddy. What's up, man? Hey man. Hey Turkey, Turkey man, how are you? I'm good. How about that baseball ball? They're, they're, they're looking, looking good, good early on. They answered Tony yeah. Vitello challenged him, didn't they? He challenged yeah. him. How 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 hard would it be to get tickets uh, up in the season or to maybe go watch a maybe an SEC game or something like that? How hard would it be? Uh, to, to be honest, honest with you, you I don't know because I haven't tried to yet or, or look into it. Quite frankly, for my family, well, you but. It. Uh, if, if you're, you're going, going to, to look, look into that, that I'd go ahead and do it now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm afraid yeah. of. But uh, I got uh, I got a situation there. I'm kind of taking care of mom right now. We have to move her in with us. And so I'm kind of kind of being uh, tied down. It's hard to do certain things, you know what I mean? And, but, Absolutely. Uh, we'll be I, thinking I, of I you. do enjoy watching them when they come on. And, hey, mom enjoys watching them, too. Uh, we, we, she likes baseball, too. So uh, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Hey, I was going to ask a question. You probably had not talked about this, and if you if you have, a, uh, I'm sorry I'm asking the question, but uh, if you call me and don't drink at, at a Missouri game, uh, uh, say anything to our our players. Have you talked about that any at all? Yeah. Um, what he said. Uh, there's some hearsay out there, um, but there was a conversation with with our players. Uh, he was very animated on the sideline, um, but like, yeah, he 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 acted a fool. Is he playing with full deck? Um, I would. Is I would, he missed a few cards, sir? I would say, I would say, yeah. I mean, I mean, dude, he's smart. He's intelligent. Okay. I I just wonder sometimes, you know, uh, you know, we uh, things he pops off with, and he has such a problem with us uh, as a as a team uh, and a color. Uh, it makes you makes you uh, not like him to start with, I guess. Oh, hundred percent, uh, man. He's easily the number one, I think, enemy for for Tennessee a villain, Tennessee he, fans. Yeah. He has to be number one villain. Yeah. Well, brother, I'll get out of here. I'll listen to you. I just, uh, I'm going to get your comment on that. And, and uh, what, uh, who, who does uh, the basketball balls play Saturday? Texas A&M. Okay. Texas A&M. All righty. All right, Turkey Man. Good I'll to hear talk- from you. you. You too, guys. Have a good one. Talk to you later. You, you, think, you think number one, Tennessee fans, public enemy number one for Tennessee fans is Eli Drinkwitz? Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's a, a good, good question. question. It has to be. It has to be. Base, baseball, it would be uh, Chase, Chase Burns, Burns right, right now. now. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm being serious. serious. I'm going to make, make a list. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't think Chase Burns who, is number one. Who would you, for, for, for strictly baseball, baseball, who would you put over Chase Burns? Burns? Oh, for Dave baseball? Van Horn? 
Yeah. For baseball? Just strictly, yeah, I would yes. put I would put Chase Burns as one for baseball. I was yeah, that's overall what I'm Tennessee athletics, period. Just Yeah, yeah I, I just, just meant, meant baseball. baseball. Yeah, baseball would be Chase Burns. <laughs> yeah. Um football and overall. Because we, we know that overall means football. Um I, I think Beamer is number two, probably behind Drinkwitz. Beamer, where, where is Vince Morrow number three behind those two? Uh, Vince Vince Morrow, yeah. I He's on the list. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't think he moves the needle because every time he says something, Tennessee claps well, up those cheeks. We're we're, 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 we're we're being silly. It's it's Dan, Dan Wilkin and Pat Forty. I don't even think. I don't, I, I think, think Tennessee, Tennessee fans dislike Dan Wilkin and Pat Forty more than Eli, Eli Drinkwitz. No. Mm-mm. You, don't you don't think so? so? Mm-mm. Mm, I don't think so. I, I think what Drinkwitz did, and this is what he wants. I mean, he wants us to be talking about, about him. But that's cool. Give you, what you, get you give you what you want. You deserve a conversation, acting a damn fool. Um, but, like, what he did during the football season and then – his antics, courtside, Tennessee Missouri game. He has to be number one, man. He has to be. I don't. I don't see anybody else being number one. Well, that's what the yeah. text box is for. The text box yeah, the- can pe- can uh, allow people to share <laughs> their opinions as well. So Neela Mafia says blank walking in forty blank Chase Burns. Um, he also, also nay notes. Did you say blank? Okay, he did say that too. Uh, Chipane says Tony V taking shots at Chase Burns after the game last night. I'm here for it. Man, why'd you why you why you put that out there like that, man? You know what you was doing. Why'd you put I that? No, I, what, why I, did I you was put that Tony Vitello quote out there, huh? I, I, was I was hyping, hyping up Christian Moore and, and his. Nah, you know what you was doing, Ben McGee. And, and Simo's great leadership and willingness to move over to second base to open up a spot for a freshman to start a shortstop. And then Tony made a great comparison, and I ran with it. This, this is this is y'all's king. Yesterday, eight fourteen. This is y'all's baseball king. For coverage, Ben McKee, 14. Tony Vitello on Christian Moore playing second base tonight instead of shortstop. Tony, he's got an unselfish approach about where he's at in the lineup or where he's at in the field. Some of the pitchers, like last year, I had conversations with uh, guys. Hey, we're going to move you to this day on the weekend. No, I don't want to do that. Boy, oh boy. I like it. I like it for Tony Vitello. And Ben, you couldn't wait to push Sin. You could not wait to push Sin on that one. I have no, no idea, idea what you're talking about. This tweet right here. 814. I I From could your account, wait. You wasn't hacked, was you? They get you too. Yeah. They got Trey Smith. Hey, they look, get you. The, the, the game, game ended at six forty-five. Tony, Tony talked about seven, and I didn't tweet it out to about eight fifteen. So I could wait a little bit. No, Tony. I'm glad Tony did that because because Tony has not said anything the whole time. And taking the high road the whole time, time. huh? Publicly taking, taking the high road publicly oh, yeah. the whole time. And narratives have been created. You got Wake Forest Twitter account trying to. Make it seem like that Chase Burns was done wrong and 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 uh, was caged up and is finally getting an opportunity and he's always been this productive and this consistent. No, 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 no. Tony, he has a mic too. So I'm glad Tony did that. I'm glad he did. Good job. Will Wade may be gone, but I put him high on the list from Clay. Yeah, there's been 
there's been people that have like come and gone. Like Will Way, I think is one of those. Like he was really high, but maybe still on the list, but not as high because he's not at LSU anymore. Uh, Jay Epp says that Kirby is public enemy number one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Kirby just really because he wins. wins. Yeah, he's winning. Now he did make a little slick comment about Tennessee. And the, the offense. offense. Yeah, in the offense. He did. But, like, it didn't bother me all that much. But what Drinkwitz did, that probably bothered me more. Because I thought it was a weak move. Just say what he said and scamper away. No, man, say what you just. Stand right there and say it. Don't run away. Say it and wait for the response. That's, that's what you're supposed to do if you're going to say something like that. And it's weird you do that after getting 60 plus hung on you the previous two years. Like that's, 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 that's a little weird to me. Well, but hey, and I, I also think it's, it's difficult for, I know that Georgia is the bigger rival. Obviously Georgia is a rival. Missouri is not. I understand that when I say what I'm about to say, but I, I feel like it's an easier pill to swallow losing to Georgia. Whereas you just feel disgusted when Tennessee loses to Missouri. Yeah. Losing to losing to Georgia is annoying because you hate Georgia and they're a rival, but they're the best program in college football right now. Whereas Tennessee has no business losing to Missouri, and and that just makes the feeling even more disgusting. On top of Eli Drinkwitz popping off at the mouth. Yeah, I'm with. You. Yeah, I, I felt I felt disgusted. I was disgusted. Yeah, because of how we play. I'm I'm with you. Uh, Nathaniel says Gino. Gino oh, will always one. be that that public enemy number one for, for him. I get it. I get it. 100%. A652503 uh, is our number. The Beatty Chevrolet text box. That's where it's at, folks. Send in the comments. Send in the questions. BeattyChevrolet.com. Home of the warranty for life. In business, 90 years, folks. 90 plus years. Silverados, Equinoxes, Blazers, Suburbans, Tahoe. Go to the website, BeattyChevrolet.com or in person there at Beatty on Parkside Drive. Locally owned and operated. Stay with us. Swain Event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. You're listening to the Swain Event. And you know this, man. Here in Knoxville, we love it when a squirrel's in the checkerboards. But when there's a squirrel in our attic, that's all sides. When that happens, call Alpha Wildlife. They're Knoxville's veteran-owned and operated wildlife removal company. When unwanted critters put their feet up on your coffee table, call 865-224-6555. Let the Tennessee fans at Alpha Wildlife evict those unwanted tenants and set your home up with a winning defense to keep that wildlife where it belongs. That's Alpha Wildlife at 865-224-6555. They have locations in Nashville, Memphis, Chattanooga, and in parts of South Carolina. Check them out online at alphawildlife.com. Fellas, it's a new year. Low T Center can make it a great one. If you've been feeling tired and grumpy, have noticed a lack of motivation and drive, you may have low T. Low testosterone levels can cause weight gain, loss of muscle mass, and so much more. I recommend Low T Center. It's where I get my levels tested. They make it quick and easy to get your levels checked, and it's only $25. And with their on-site lab, you'll get your results back in about 25 minutes. Go to LowTCenter.com now to book your appointment online. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care. Hey there, Swain Event crew. Just like fall sports, the Knoxville area real estate market is strong and growing stronger. We're in everything region. When you get the big orange itch to buy, sell, or invest, call me, Jennifer Morris, with Keller Williams Realty at 865-257-7897 or email me at jennifermorris865 at gmail.com. Go Vols! Looking for a different way to enjoy the show? Yes! Then check out Swain Event TV on YouTube. Beatty Chevrolet saves you money. 2.9% APR or $5,000 total value on new Silverado 1500s. New Equinox with 1.9% APR plus no payments for 90 days or 2,500 total cash allowance at Beatty Chevrolet. Yep. 
Ben McKee getting old, y'all. I just saw Ben drink coffee from a mug. Ben don't normally drink coffee from a mug, people. Ben's the type of dude that will go to one of these stores and uh, get all the cream and the sugar and uh, stuff all up in it, looking all good, looking like a dessert. Ben has officially reached grown man status, adulthood. This man is drinking coffee straight from a mug. Ben McKee, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm surprised you've just not noticed it because I've been doing it for I just yeah, probably since, since we started, started doing a, a daily show. show I I, I, I have, have a cup of coffee, coffee each morning. Man, I'm going to the falls, man. Now, now but, but I, I I will will also, also if I'm out and about and and need some coffee, coffee I will also go get the the souped up. Give me all the creamer. That's you. Yeah, give me my venti iced vanilla latte, and I'm good to go, baby. That's you. Lord have mercy. Good morning. Good morning. Who we who we speaking with? <laughs> hey, y'all, it's Russ. What's going on, man? I, I bet you would love a nice, nice venti ice latte, latte, vanilla latte right, right now. Waking, waking up at six ten a.m. and I'm sure, sure you've been up before six o'clock. Yeah, I've been up the whole the whole time with you guys. Um, he piped down. He loves the coffee right now. He's a grown up. He's supposed to be up at I have, five I have, thirty six o'clock. I have, I have my black Tennessee with the stupid Butch Jones font in, written Tennessee and orange on it with the with balls on the other side. I hate that font, by the way, but it's a nice coffee mug that Gina got me. So, But there's nothing yeah, in Gina. my mug. Ex- there's nothing in the mug except coffee. Just coffee. Nothing else goes in it. I'm a grown-ass man. I'm with you. Good good, good for you, Rusty. I hope you feel bigger and tougher, tougher because of that. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Hey, uh, so what's this question that we're asking? What, give me the parameters. Is it just no, we, just, we? It was just uh, you know, public enemy number one. We're talking about Eli Drinkwitz, and uh, I know that was the, uh, a topic from the Missouri game. And you know, yeah. there's, there's, I don't think anyone publicly knows what was actually said to right. our players from Eli, uh, but he was talking to our players, and right, it's just a bad look, honestly. No, nah, coaches don't need to be getting. In. I mean, it'll, it, if it's all in jest, and he knows the players and their pat, and you know, like, and he's actually met them and said, "Hello, you're a heck of a player." Yeah. Pre-game or, cool. or whatever. It's one thing if you like know, but if you're just the coach of another team and you have no relationship and you're like heckling, that's weird. That's, that's all weird. kinds of weird. That's like that's Frankie Junior. Weird over in Columbia. I mean, that's weird. Um, and Eli's weird. I mean, you know, just the fact that he won't wear that he has that hair and won't wear a baseball cap, still trying to rock a visor, is another thing where he screams weird. But I think right now it's got to be Oates. Hmm. I know Oates is a good Oates is a fantastic basketball coach, but he just does not care what kind of dudes he has. He's a prick. That was that was how I should have summarized what I was saying earlier. He's a prick, and his basketball program. Are a bunch, bunch of pricks too. Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah, I man. mean, we got we got the elbow drop last night. We got oh. stomping on we got stomping on broom the game in Tuscaloosa and in, in Auburn mm-hmm. against Auburn earlier in the year. I mean, we we I mean, I guess you know if you Nate Oaks, you would just argue last night that that player just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> that, that is a good line. line. Man, you probably just get, I, I, the player probably just get reprimanded. Nothing, nothing, no serious punishment coming. Bama's way. No, right. absolutely not. But whatever. It is what it is. It, it, Nate Oates is a phenomenal basketball coach, one of the best basketball yeah. coaches in the country. But of late, it's just always something negative going on with his program. Yeah, and he's oblivious to it. It's like it's like he doesn't see that anything's going on. That's, that's I don't think he's oblivious. I just don't think he cares. Yeah, okay. That might be fair. So, how are you saying Louisville? Indiana? Indiana possibly too, because you know that that job's going to uh, be open, and they're going to they're going, and that would be the job that you know. I mean, that's a that's a blue blood. Yeah, I would back the first trip up up if I'm Indiana. It's yeah. a wrap from Woodson. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's a wrap. Hey, since we finally got a since they finally announced, we've known forever they're going to do five conference champions. Yep, and, and seven at larges. That's I mean, anybody that was arguing that that might not happen, I I, I it, it made my ears bleed but now that it's done let me throw this at 
us Tennessee fans. Is finishing third in the SEC the sweet spot? Because you don't, you get a bye week and don't have to go play in stupid Atlanta. And you're gonna, and if you're the three seed, when the two seed loses to the, or when the when the team that loses in the SEC championship game, you're probably gonna be higher on in the playoff committee spot than they were, because they're gonna drop after that loss. That means you're probably gonna be the five or six or seven overall seed and get to host a playoff game. I think you're something. SEC team. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I want to finish third in the SEC, so I don't have to play in Atlanta. And, and I basically, I, that's that's my bye week. I get a week off and not have to go play in that game that doesn't mean anything anymore. And then I get the home playoff game because I'm going to be number five, six, or seven in the overall playoff committee poll. So I'm going to be hosting Penn State or. Oregon or Washington or somebody week one of the playoffs. I mean, the other I'm option, picking up what you're putting down. I think it's a, a good thought. I mean, obviously the team should not have the the mindset no, or the goal to, to finish third, but there are certainly benefits to finishing right. third. I, I, I certainly agree there. You definitely don't want to fit. You don't want to be the team that goes to Atlanta and then loses because then you probably you're you're bordering on somewhere around being eight, nine, or ten in the playoff committee, and you're maybe you think they drop that much. Yeah, I think it depends on your record. Right? Yeah, I mean, and you, how you, you lose. could be undefeated. You could be undefeated going that, and you lose. You don't drop that far, and you think you're still one of the hosts. Yeah. I think the three's going to host either way. The two probably does also, but the two has to play the extra ball game. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you, if you can if you can guarantee winning in Atlanta, great, because you get the buy, but. Here's the other thing. Josh Heifel, of course, would want the bye in the first round of playoffs. Any White wants a home game. Well, yeah, I, I think if you can pick any scenario outside of being the first team uh, and not playing the, 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 the first round bye or having the first round bye not playing that game, I think the next best scenario would be to be the third best SEC team. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm with you. And, like – Honestly, I'm sitting here as a Tennessee fan, and like I want to be number one, but of course. right now that's going to be hard to do for for Tennessee this upcoming season. And so, just being one of the twelve is and should be the goal. But if Tennessee's the, the third best team in the SEC, dude, that that would be an awesome place to be if you're Tennessee going from last year to this year. Yeah, of course. Well, I don't mean just this coming year. I mean period in general, long term. Yeah, long term. Yes, I, I guess what I'm getting at is, can, can we just get rid of the SEC championship game? I know it's a money maker, but it's stupid. No, just give the no. champ. Just give the number one thing to the to the champion of the mm-hmm. whoever ends up. And if, and if there's three teams tied, like there was in '89, mm-hmm. then you just go to tiebreakers to who gets to be the number one seed and in, in the conference champion. Blah blah blah. You know uh, they ain't going nowhere, Rusty. Too much money. Too I many know. People go, and I think that's why. You have the playoff saying conference champions get the first round by, so that way you can keep the conference championship games in place. Right. That's, no, no that's, I, get it. Yeah. I get it. And I, I mean that, that that is something, uh, uh, Rusty. And I agree with, with your thought about you know Danny White throwing a home game over a bye game. But I think another way to look at it is if Tennessee were to get a bye game instead of playing a home game. The, if they're having a bye game, they're still going to play a home game. It's just a week later, and you're one step one step closer to a national championship. And although, yeah, you'd like to have two home games playing in no, you don't the national championship. championship. You talking about the quarterfinals of the playoffs? Yeah. No, the quarterfinals of the playoffs are at both sides. The, you're right. If you're a if you're a team that's a bye, you don't you you don't play a game on a campus. You're period. Right. You're right. I I don't look that far, but I, I still yeah. I think my thought still applies. Playing in the national championship game, if you're able to make it that far, which having a bye week, that one less game you have to play to get there, uh, right. playing in a in a national championship game, the attention and the brand recognition and, and everything that comes with playing in that game, I think would make up for not playing a home game during that quote unquote bye week. Yeah, that's why that's why I said Josh Heupel would rather get the bye 
because it gets you closer to playing in the national championship game. But Danny White would rather be five through eight and, and be hosting a game because he, he gets yeah. to have a game on campus and it's a moneymaker. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah but, but, I, but, I, but I'm saying real, if you, you make, make the national, national championship, championship, Danny's, Danny's going to make more money off of appearing in the national, national championship, championship game and, and kind of make up for not having that home playoff game is what yeah. I'm saying. I, I think I'm saying Danny, Danny would also be okay as long as they make it far enough because then you're getting all the national recognition of playing in the national championship game. And that, that produces money as well, if not, not more. Here's the, here's the other question. Or not the other question. I'll state it like this and ask a question. The, the statement is, we're not going to stay at 12 long. I mean, I know they met about 14, but we're going to go to 16 pretty quick because how long before Georgia's athletic director sees them get a bye but don't get a home game? How long before they're like, we need to just like, let everybody play week one because we, we, we want to be the one seed playing the 12 seed at home the first weekend. We want to be the two seed playing the 11 seed. But sorry, the one playing the 16 and the two playing the 15 and the three playing the 14. All those teams are going to want to be playing week one with a home game really soon, and they're going to jump up. They're going to add four more teams into it, so there's no bye week. Yeah, Rusty, I, and I don't – I see a lot of people saying that the, this is not good and, and you know, BCS – They'd rather have the BCS than expanding to 12 or 14. I, I just don't see enough points to agree with that. And, like, I see some of the most respected college football analysts uh, making these points about the BCS. I Give me more football games at, at the end of the give day. Give me more good ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool get... with more football games. I'm cool with that. Um, yeah. And I don't really agree with – the regular season being watered down to the point no. where you got to go back to the BCS. Um, like No, there's, as it's a, a dumb argument they keep making. Yeah, like as a, as a former player, if I am currently in this situation where you have opportunity to go to the college football playoff, and let's say it's expanded to 14 teams, all I know is week three, week four, Tennessee's playing Florida. And I don't really care about the playoffs. All I know is we play in Florida. It's time to get it on. There's no difference whether it's BCS, whether it's 14 playoff, whether it's 12 team playoff, 14 team playoff. Florida's a rival game. That's a rivalry. Third Saturday in October. You're not going to sit there and tell players, oh, well, you know, if you lose this one, it's okay because, you know, you still have a opportunity for the college football playoff. You're not saying that before the game. You're not saying no. that the week of the game. Like, you're treating that like the Super Bowl. And I don't think that's really going to change when it when it comes to rivalry games in season. I mean, Tennessee plays Georgia. Or Tennessee's playing Alabama. Tennessee's playing uh, Florida. Like, I don't think that's going to change much, man. No, I mean, the NFL with those 14 out of 30 two teams right that's watered down that makes the regular season not matter when it's when it's that big a percentage of your teams make the playoffs that's that's a huge problem but if it's 14 or 16 out of like 80 teams just in the power four conferences or and there's 132 that are actually eligible for the playoffs when you factor in liberties and two lanes and all those schools 16 out of that many teams doesn't water down the product and it also here's the other thing it doesn't water it down. It actually makes it better because the egg bowl at the end of the year, somebody's playing more. spoiler against the, somebody's playing spoiler against the other team to maybe keep somebody out of the playoff. That game actually means something now that we all need to watch. Vanderbilt's yep. playing Tennessee the last weekend of the year, and Vanderbilt may have a chance to knock Tennessee out of the playoffs. And all eyes are on that game too. Penn State and Illinois the last game of the year. I, I mean, I don't know if they play the last game of the year, but. My my point remains that there's more games that matter late, where spoilers can get involved. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Rusty, and thanks, bro, for the phone call. Thanks, we really guys. appreciate you. Love thanks for getting up. I just, I'm I'm not on the bandwagon right now with everyone else who's like, oh, this is not good for college football, and you know, give me the BCS over this. No, man, I don't want some computers telling me who who deserves to play for a national championship, the top two teams. No, I don't. Give me a tournament. Yeah, yeah. Ab ab absolutely. And that last point from Rusty was the one that I was about to, to hammer home, so I'm glad he brought it up. I don't understand how you can say that the regular season is going to be watered down while technically 
But now, now there's going to be better games throughout the season, and, and especially towards the end of the season when Rusty viewed it from the aspect of teams playing spoiler. I viewed it on the flip side of that in terms of more teams having the opportunity to get into the playoffs. There's going to be more important regular season games there at the end of the season of teams trying to fight and, and get into the playoffs. The, the regular season is – there's going to be more to pay attention to because you're not looking at, oh, you know, it's going to be those four or five teams. Now, all of a sudden, you're keeping an eye on, what, 16 to 20 teams uh, about who could potentially get in on top of seeing, okay, who's going to get the double or who's going to get the bye, who's going to be seated where, who's playing in the conference championship game. There, there's a whole lot more to pay attention to. And I, I think there, there's going to be more stakes involved the last month of the season than there ever has been before on top of all the rivalry games like the egg bowl to determine whether Ole Miss makes the playoff or not is fascinating uh Tennessee Georgia if that's the second to last game of the season that game having playoff implications on it that's phenomenal for the regular season and it's a rivalry game so I I'm with you Swain I don't view that point at all and my biggest thing is it baffles me absolutely baffles me that people don't think co- or that people don't think playoff games are great for the sport playoff playoff games are phenomenal major league baseball the nfl hockey especially, especially when you have home court home field home ice advantage involved like 1000% like, the playoff that, atmospheres yes that that's that is sports at its absolute best is playoff games. That that is the best of the best. And to think that that's not going to help the sport or that's not good for the sport, I think it's absolutely ludicrous. And now I will say something to talk about on, on the other side of the break. And uh, Big Willie Style mentions it. I would. I think I'd rather have a bye week than play a home game. Eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three. We'll hit the text box up. We'll continue the conversation on the other side. Swain event fueled by Dead End Barbecue. What's up, Swain Event family? It's great to be on board. This is Taylor Hawkins with Modern Woodman Fraternal Financial, and I have one question for you. When was the last time you have slowed down and evaluated your financial situation? Just like the Vols, a great game plan leads to victory. Let us help you achieve your financial goals with a custom-made game plan. No matter what stage of life you're in, protecting your family and hard-earned money is important. So let one of our local and trusted financial professionals secure your future by visiting one of our 10 branch offices across Tennessee or give us a call locally at 865-312-5638. And remember, go Vols. Registered representative and investment advisor, representative offering securities and advisory services through NWA Financial Services, Inc., a wholly owned subsidiary of Modern Woodman of America, member of INCRA, SIPC. We're here with Dr. Michael Carlson of Tennessee Regenerative Sports Medicine to discuss stem cell treatment and PRP. If you have orthopedic injuries, you should give them a call. That's right, Jason. We specialize in regenerative non-surgical orthopedics. So we treat damaged tendons, ligaments, and joints by using ultrasound-guided injections with stem cells or PRP. And this form of treatment actually stimulates the body's own reparative process and allows for healing of the damaged tissue. So, Doc, what makes your training different than others? Well, Jason, I've been practicing in Knoxville for 26 years, and I'm certified in interventional regenerative orthopedic medicine through the American Academy of Orthopedic Medicine. At Tennessee Regenerative Sports Medicine, I'm the one doing the procedure, and we're using your own bone marrow stem cells or PRP. So in other words, it comes from you and it goes back to you. So you know exactly what you're getting and know exactly the level of training involved. Tennessee Regenerative Sports Medicine, trsportsmedicine.com, East Tennessee's leader in PRP and stem cell therapy. When you are craving some quality barbecue, there's only one place to go. Dead End Barbecue. Dead End Barbecue has been featured on ESPN's Taste of the Town, the first barbecue restaurant on the SEC Network, CBS Sports, Headline News Tailgate Show, Amazon Prime's The Restaurant Comeback, Food Paradise, and named one of the top 100 barbecue restaurants in America. The search is over. Dead End Barbecue is located on 3621 Sutherland Avenue right here in Knoxville. You can even have it delivered right to your door through Chow Now. Visit their website at deadendbbq.com. Dead End Barbecue. The search is over. The conversation doesn't stop when the show is over. Follow the Swain event on Twitter and like this show on Facebook. (laughs) 
Sweat Event and SweatEvent.com, fueled by that and barbecue. Top 100 barbecue restaurant in America, Ben McKee, Go Falls 247. I'm Jason Swain, live here in the Low T Center studio. Big thanks to Rusty uh, for the phone call. You were going to make a point before we went to break. What was that point? Yeah, yeah just that uh, I, I think that it was uh, on the top of my head, like, a home playoff game would be awesome inside of Neyland Stadium, but the ultimate goal is to win a national championship. And I'd, I'd rather have a bye week and play on a neutral field the next week than, than play a home game. I, I think just off the top of my head, not putting a lot of thought into it, but again, the ultimate goal is the national championship, winning a national championship. And I think the best path to winning the national championship is, is having a bye week. And, and taking your crack at a, at a neutral field. And you know Tennessee fans are going to travel well. And if you end up playing, um, you, you know, with, with this, who, who are some teams like Tulane the last couple of years who, who would now get in the playoffs, so those non-traditional group of six, group of five schools, the, the two lanes of the world? Like, they, I'm sure that they would travel well, or, or like even Memphis a couple of years ago. Uh, under Mike Norvell, like I, those teams w- would have a nice showing in terms of fan support at these neutral sites. But I, I think if you're a top seed and, and you're playing a school like that, then it's practically going to end up being a home game, just not in your home stadium. And and even if it's you know Tennessee, Ohio State, you, you know Tennessee is going to be well represented. Vol Nation is going to travel, have fun paying for those tickets, but Vol Nation is is going to travel. So. Uh, again, the ultimate goal is to win the national championship, and home game would be awesome. It'd be meaningful. It'd be a great advantage. But I'd rather have a week off, resting my players, and guaranteeing that I'm advancing and one step closer to a national championship. You can't lose. You can't lose the game you don't play. You can't get Correct. hurt in the game you don't play. So, yeah, this is an no-brainer. If you had the choice between playing a home game. A playoff game at home or not playing a game at all and you advance automatically yeah you, you sign up to take the bye and play the next game at a neutral site I'm all for more football games Brian Hunsucker uh, saying that on the text box there was a meeting about going to 14 teams in 2026 and there's some people out there that feels like this is this is terrible, and the BCS is better than this. And I just don't agree. I don't think that a team is going to go into Florida week, Bama week, Georgia week, any week, and go, yeah, yeah, you know, this one don't, this one don't matter. We, eh, it don't matter because the the playoff field is expanded. This ain't this ain't baseball or basketball, like you. Can't do that. You're still, still only playing sport. twelve games. Like you still, yeah, you, st- you can't do that in the sport. You're, you're not still, playing 162. You're you're not playing 82. And you can't lose to teams you recruit against. You have to beat those teams. That's how you win recruiting battles. There's too much on the line to not take regular season game series. You lose your job if, if you if you don't you you'll get fired. I just my simple thought is I just don't I don't understand how anyone I said it before the break I don't understand how anyone can think playoff games fucking playoffs man playoff games are bad for the sport playoffs is sport at its best at its absolute best and now you're gonna throw the steep tradition of college football into the playoffs and these massive True. fan bases True. into the playoffs, uh, it's it's going to be freaking awesome. And the fact that some people don't think that it will be awesome is, is baffling to me. Yes, it's going to be awesome. But I, I did want to ask you this. I know you're trying to hit off the text box before we get out of here. Maybe now that they're guaranteeing a conference champion a bye week, maybe this won't be an issue. But do you think that maybe those conference championship games could be treated – like the week 17, week 18 games of the NFL to where teams are, are resting players. I know it's a conference championship game, but for a team that, that is going to be in the playoffs, do you think we could end up seeing a, a program rest players to make sure that they're good to go for the 
for, for the college, college football, football playoff? playoff? You know, I, I asked David Cutcliffe uh, a question like that when um, he joined us on the nation a couple weeks ago. And, like, he understands that could be a possibility, though, at some point, and doesn't want that to happen. Um, like, I just think it depends on where where you are from an injury standpoint. Like, if you if you're beat up, and it's more beneficial for you to rest than the, the than to play. Does it matter if it's a championship game or not? Knowing that you're gonna have opportunity to win a national championship game. Yeah, it's a conference championship game. But if like you have, let's say Nico was seventy five percent. Or sixty five percent, and you're playing in the SEC championship game, and you've limped into the SEC championship game. But but you're guaranteed to play in the college football playoff. What are you doing? Like now, I I do think it is different than the NFL in the sense of when NFL teams are resting players. At the end of the season, week 17, week 18, they've already clinched. And that's what I'm saying. If you already clinched the playoff, that's, that's, my, that's but, my example. But, but I'm, I'm saying, like, like, like the Ravens, they rested week 18 because they knew that they were the number one seed. They knew that they were the double bye. There's no way of knowing 100% what seed you're going to be going into the conference championship game. So technically, there's, there's still something to play for. You, you, you're not guaranteed a bye week even if you're the number one, number two team in the country. Because I almost think if you're the committee and you see a team rest a bunch of players in their conference championship game and don't really take it seriously, who's to say that they're not going to get bumped out of that top five? And you have to win to guarantee a bye week anyway. If, if, you, if you lose that game and you still get in, in that scenario, and I know this is hypothetical, you have a better chance of winning the championship than if you play the SEC championship game with a half injured player, he gets hurt even more, and then he's unavailable for the playoffs. You ain't winning nothing then. I'm not saying that scenario is going to play out this year or next year, but I can see it playing out at some point. And if you, it, you would have to be a top five, top seven seed. Yeah. To, to, to rest players in the conference championship game. Because if you're anywhere from 7 to 12, 7 to 14, yes, if they go to 14, yeah. you got to guarantee, yeah. you got to go out and put your best foot forward to try and make the playoffs first and foremost. Yeah, you may need that game. You totally yeah, may It's all circumstantial, but I do wonder if, if you get a undefeated whoever playing in the SEC championship game and you're the number one, number two ranked team going into the weekend. Although technically you're not guaranteed a double buy because you haven't won the conference championship game, I'm very curious to see how those teams approach the conference championship game because you haven't guaranteed a buy. But if you're the number one, number two team going into the weekend, then you're going to make the playoffs. You're, you're not falling below twelve. So do you do you risk not winning the conference championship and, and not having that buy? Or, or do you try to rest up? I'm very curious to see how that plays out. Me too, man. Me too. Bring on the playoffs. Bring it on. Bring on more football. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I'm not a big fan. I wasn't a big fan of shortening the game with rules this past year. Why you want to give us less football? Give us more football. Uh, I'm all for it. I'm all for love to Ben McKee. What's wrong, what's wrong with love, man? We're here right here because of love. I'm all you for love. You a funny way of showing it. Love is in the air. You can find your perfect match even after Valentine's Day with Hiller. You can get a free UV light when you purchase select new HVAC systems. You can get a free whole home surge protection when you buy a new whole home generator. Get 50% off. A descaler when you purchase a new tankless water heater. More details online, happyhealer.com. So that way, you'll never be more in love 
with your home. And after these home upgrades, the specials at Hiller. HappyHiller.com is the website. Been letting us know, like, next week, y'all, I may not even be here because I'm, I'm moving up to the north side. I'm moving up to the east side. I'm getting ready to close on my new house. Finally about to move back into town. So we may see you being next week. We may not. Certainly understand if uh, we don't because a move is a huge transition, especially with uh, a little toddler and then um, being a couple weeks away from uh, another toddler in the house. So um, Tennessee this weekend, Texas A&M. Texas A&M losing to Arkansas. They lost to Vanderbilt, uh, two ugly Roll game for AM, who is probably dancing on the bu- bubble a little bit now. And Tennessee has the opportunity to make their lives even harder this weekend. It is a revenge game for, for Tennessee. Uh, I won't forget Wade Taylor, the fourth, hitting a three and pointing at Jordan Ganey, getting a technical foul. And they they made life difficult for Dalton Connect. They were really physical with them. Uh, it was probably Dalton's worst shooting uh, performance uh, of the season. And, um, if you know anything about Dalton, things like that fuels him. He takes that, harnesses that, and uses it for motivation. So, dude, this game this weekend, folks, it's going to be something else. We got Checker uh, Food City Center. Hopefully. Uh, is 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 the Checker game is what they're calling it, which is one of the silliest names I've ever heard. But I get it. You can't say Checker TBA, even though TBA is still in the name. You can say and, uh, Checker TBA and Food City Center. Well, they, they decided to call it the checker game, which sounds silly to me, but hey, I'm I'm certainly no market, marketing yeah, I mean, I genius. I, I barely, do, I barely qualified to do my job, and I, I don't even know if I am qualified to do my job. I'm surprised you let me speak on here twice a week, but I guess that's why you booted me down for five days a week to two days a week, but uh, that, that's a separate conversation for a separate day. But uh, it, it'll be cool. It'll be a fun atmosphere, I, I think. TBA will be rocking and rolling. Five game stretch coming up, Swain. It'll be brutal, and uh, it would have been real nice. You know what? I ain't letting you get out of here. I know we got to get out of here, but I ain't letting you get out of here before I make this point. Go for it. About a month ago, you got on to me. A little over a month ago, I think. At this point, sure would be nice if uh, if Auburn had beaten Alabama and Tuscaloosa, wouldn't it have? Was that? Uh, because, because Tennessee, Tennessee is chasing, chasing Alabama, Alabama in the standings, standings, not Auburn. Tennessee still has to play Alabama. Tennessee controls. Oh, now, now, now we're allowed, allowed to make that point, point huh? Well, now, now we're allowed to make that point. point. Say it again. Say it again. What'd you say? I said, said now, now we're allowed to make that point, point of they, they still have to be head to head. Yeah, I mean, at the time, it was beneficial for for Tennessee. Alabama beat Auburn because Auburn was ahead of Tennessee. Now, we need Alabama to lose. Florida didn't handle the business last night. so That would have been a big help. Uh, Kentucky, I, I'm just messing with you, obviously, but uh, I was getting around to saying that Kentucky losing was a big help, and it really seems to have narrowed it down to Alabama and Tennessee as of right now. Auburn and a couple of others nipping at the heels, of course. Uh, but it would have been a great night for Tennessee in the standings had – Bama ended up losing to Florida on top of Kentucky, losing to LSU. So uh, right now I'd, I'd say it's a Tennessee and Alabama race, but Tennessee has some tough games coming up. This five-game stretch is is brutal, and uh, it'll be fun to see them try and track down a, another regular season championship under Rick Barnes. And Saturday I, I think we'll be rocking out. I know we've had some discussions about TVA this year, but I, I would be very, very surprised. Checkered. Prime time at 8 o'clock on ESPN. It'll be rocking. And I think we can add Buzz Williams temporarily to the list of public enemies after uh, after that A&M game in College Station. I, I just want to know. Out the court. I just, I just want to know what color Buzz is supposed to wear. They, they don't include his section on the arena map for the people trying to call time out at midcourt. What, what color are they supposed to wear? That, that's all I want to know. Buzz going to be on his best behavior. He's going to be in that coaching box on Saturday. Please. please. He, he got humbled real quick. And I've always liked Buzz Williams. But it, it has been a complete struggle 
since A&M knocked, knocked off Tennessee. Tennessee. If I'm Buzz Williams, I'm, I'm asking Rick Barnes before the game. You know how coaches like to yuck it up before the game. Like, dang, Rick, why are y'all here trying to snitch on me, man? Why are you trying to snitch on me, Rick? If I'm Buzz, I'm trying to get Rick to pray over me and with me before the game right there at, at midcourt. And speaking of Rick Barnes, how about this? If Tennessee wins on Saturday or Tennessee's next win overall, it'll be win number 800 for Rick Barnes. Oh, man. That's special. Man, that's special right there. Woo! Saturday's going to be something else. There's is going to be something else. You got a ticket for me? I can, I can get, get you a media, media pass, pass probably. No, nah, I'm good. So wait a minute. You are a member of the media. media. Nah, I'm good. So wait a minute. Fuel about that in barbecue. Top 100 barbecue restaurant in America. Ben McKee, Go Balls 247. I'm live here in the Low T Center studio. Appreciate everybody on the Betty Chevrolet text box this morning. Both from Riceville. Big Willie style. Amazing golf ball of Wacker, Wacker guy. Brent Ben preaching this morning. More please. Chip Payne. Eli's on borrowed time. By the time Tennessee plays Missouri, he'll be fired or become an offensive analyst. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your Thursday, Friday into the weekend. Tuesday, we will be back. Tennessee. Lots. Lots of things going on right now in Tennessee athletics. Uh, men's basketball. Women's basketball. Baseball. Softball. Tuesday. We'll be back to talk about it all. For Ben McKee, I'm Jason Swain. Peace and love. We are out.